Hello and good morning. Good to have you here. Paul Tranny uh, diving into uh, Photoshop Masterclass. New features on desktop, desk, desktop, desktop, and iPad. Uh, that is the plan. Jesse, thank you so much. Um, Ray and Michelle and Rosie. It's good to be here. Uh, it's been a while. Went uh, had Adobe Max and then uh, went on a little vacation for a little bit. Uh, so it's good to be back, Valder, and Paco, good to see you as well, my friend. Uh, okay, cool, got that. All right, so uh, this is going to be really fun. Um, this is sort of my take on all like the new features, the new features that matter to uh, professionals and people that have been using Photoshop for a while. I'm going to click into this, as you can see right here. Feel free to ask me questions. Ariella, good to have you here as well. Sam Peterson in the house. All right. Um, so again, we'll we'll talk about cloud documents, kind of the ins and outs of this stuff, right? I can show you, I can glaze over the surface of some of these, but like, you know, I've been working with this stuff for a while, so I can kind of tell you sort of real world how this stuff uh, works. So uh, I'm going to do some compositing on the iPad, uh, then get into different tools. So sort of like select subject, there's a ton of features that I'm looking at right now uh, that are too long to list, quite frankly. So enhanced properties panel, and then I just did shortcuts and changes for power users because there's a lot of them, and I will call them out specifically just so you know. But I'm happy that you're here. Uh, big thank you to Terry White, the man. Learned some things about uh, Lightroom in the last half hour, which was cool. So uh, let's just go ahead and uh, switch over, if we can, to this uh, this lovely screen right here, as you can see. And that's actually uh, from my... Photoshop running on iPad, as you can see right here, okay? So we've been talking about it for a while. It's now in your hands. And again, I want to approach this from a masterclass perspective and just from a real-world perspective. What I've been using it for and at what point do I end up like switching to the desktop, right? And I do want to point out first off that I can open up PSD files uh, directly on this iPad. And you can see cloud documents right here. So these are just my various cloud documents. Some paintings, as you can see, that I've done in Fresco, right, that I can access, load them into uh, Photoshop on the iPad. But these are cloud documents. So they're available to me everywhere, right, which is super cool. Uh, by the way, so even on the desktop, if I switch over and just open up Photoshop, you can see on the left, we have Photoshop on the desktop, and on the right, we have Photoshop on the iPad. And you'll see a lot of these same files. In fact, let's go to my home, because that's going to show the most recent files. And right over here, you can see this, this file that I'm going to work on, which is it's, this is the underwater file, right? Uh, but literally, I can open up any one of these on my desktop. I have this Adobe Max file. Uh, which is pretty large. I'd like to actually take a look at it. It's a cloud PSD format. PSDC is what we call it. Uh, so is it possible to use shortcuts on your iPad if you have a keyboard? Um, yes, but honestly, they're, they're really limited right now. We know we need to build in all those hooks. But what I do want to show you is the touch shortcut, which kind of does takes the place of actually even needing a, a keyboard, uh, which is nice. So again, let's take a look at this file real fast. Here we go. This is, oh, this isn't that bad. I think I must have, this is actually a smaller version, but it has, you know, 155 layers. It's behind me, sorry you can't see that. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty large file in general. Um, there we go, so yeah. Uh, just pointing out, I can open up that. I can save any file that I want to uh, the cloud documents as a cloud document file. So even if I do a create a new, by the way, create new dialog opens up almost instantaneously. So it's like 0 0.02 or 3 milliseconds. It all just depends on your, your system. So it's always kind of hard to quantify that. Uh, but once I create a particular design, as I drag this in, whatever the case may be, Right, here's my caveman cookies, and you know, I'd throw some more things behind it. But the point is, is I could save this to my desktop or to cloud, to the cloud documents. And I like this because, again, I don't have to sweat um, saving it to Dropbox or airdropping it or anything like that. I can just jump in, change the size, hold down the shift key in this case. 
There we go, here's our fun new design. Let's click save, and this is what I'm referring to, cloud documents, and then uh, on your computer. So we'll save to cloud as caveman cookies. You get the idea, cool. Yeah, 155 layers. By the way, the original of that file is, um, is over 500 layers, and it's a gig file. So that's the original one. Um, I think that was a size down just just for uh, ease of use, and so you don't have to wait for me to load it. Um, but that's what I've done. I can go to Cloud Documents. We'll see it pop up right here. If I go right over here, oh, look, on my iPad. Give it a second. Oh, there it is. It just popped up at the top, I'm sure. There it is. It's everywhere. It's awfully nice. So, um, and honestly, yeah, it's just, it's just cool. All right, so let's get back into this. Now that I'm on my iPad, thank you so much for joining me. It's, I'm just so happy to be here. Can I say that out loud? I'm so happy to be live streaming again and the madness is over with, right? So this is taking longer with slow connections because it's saved in the cloud. So the first time you access this, it's gonna download it, okay? And then subsequent times uh, you can, um, it'll be faster. That's only the half of it for cloud documents. That's only the half of it, because I'm gonna go back to my desktop in a second and I'm gonna show you how powerful this is. But here I am on uh, my iPad, as you can see. Let's kind of move this up and, uh... ooh, Valder, you're showing off, you have a holiday? I want a holiday. And I'm happy you're here, Ray. That's what I wanna hear, love it. So here I have tools on the left, layers on the right, and they look I don't know, not master class ish Like they're they're like thumbnails where you can pinch and zoom and expand that out, and you can see I have these nice little thumbnails. Boop boop, right over here. Or excuse me, those different layers, and uh, this looks just like it does on the desktop. So I can come in here and I can turn that, you know, on, and I can twirl down some of these other fun layers, and you can see there's a lot going on here, right? But right now I'm going to composite this nice turtle into this scene. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. And again, I can pinch and zoom on that, kind of get it out of the way, and uh, use my selection tools. Now, um, honestly, um, <laughs> um, Durende, what do you want me to say? Uh, all right, is that the word? All right, all right. Um, but this lasso tool, the hardest to use tool on the desktop uh, becomes like the easiest if you could just draw on the screen. So if you're using Apple Pencil, I can literally select the lasso tool and kind of come in and get that exactness since I'm drawing right on the screen, okay? Uh, but what I would do in this case is I would actually use the quick select tool. I selected the quick select tool. We have different brush sizes. As we can see, I can scrub up and down because I get the options for uh, whatever tool I have selected. And I can start to just scrub over this turtle like I'm doing right now. It's really straightforward, right? Come in here, grab. I think I've grabbed a lot of it, but check this out, I wanna do more. And actually right down here at the bottom, if I can zoom in on that, sorry, it's right down there, you have additional options and additional tools uh, for the tool that I'm working on. I'm gonna click more, and you can see right down there, we have select similar, okay? So when I select select similar, it's gonna do the obvious, selecting those similar keys. Now answer the question about the shortcuts. Um, I could hit F, F is one of them, and it's just giving me different views. I love this grayed out view, love it, uh, of what's selected. But this view, this black and white view, is probably the cleanest, right? So I can see all these little scratches and dots and stuff that I've missed. And kind of rolling over those, grabbing everything that I want, and then viewing it back out like this. Yeah, D Durende, if you could use a Cintiq, sure, you know. Um, good luck having that Cintiq in your bed and at the coffee shop, because I have a Cintiq and it's in a drawer over there and I never use it. Cause I, but uh, yeah, honestly, love Cintiq, love Cintiq. I just, I got tired of all the cables connecting to my, to my screen and stuff. So yeah, use what tool, and actually Durende, you can agree that 
just drawing on the image is so much more intuitive than using a mouse. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm select max, boom, there we go. We created that mask. We can see it off to the side. I can pinch it on that. We could see what that looks like. Let's move this over a little bit, my laptop. Right, and we can see that layer mask up at the top. So I'm just gonna kind of jump in. I'm gonna have additional options available to me right over here. You can see them down here at the bottom. Okay, right over there. And uh, at this point, what I wanna do is I actually want to create a clipping mask to that, an adjustment layer as a clipping mask applied to the sea turtle, because the sea turtle looks too yellow, right? So that's what I'd wanna do. Sure enough, right down here, add clipped adjustment is what I wanna do. Clicking right there, boom. And at this point, adding color balance, just like that. And then from there, I can change it. Again, it was pretty yellow, and I can shift that over into the blue. Looks more natural, pretty straightforward. Keita Jones in the house. How you doing, Keita Jones? All right, so that looks pretty good. That looks good. Uh, but you know, it actually needs a little bit more because I think for this light, this light up at the top, I want some of that light splashing down on this turtle. So in that case, I'm gonna create a second layer. So our first blank layer, I'm gonna use a brush. And at this point, I'm gonna change the brush size, right? And if I do a long press, we get additional tools, right? Oh, Kita, you were just, I just wanna give you a hug. You were the best. So check this out, soft round, and the pressure that I put on it will determine the opacity and flow, which I love. So this is gonna really take advantage of Apple Pencil, which I like. So we can come in here, just kind of paint right here. I get it, I can make this a little smaller in this case but I'm just adding highlights. I get it, I'm coloring outside the lines. I'm not worried too much about that. Put a splash on the shell, dropping down that size even more. Let's put hard light right there on his head, right? And Kita, you, you know, if you've been working in Photoshop for a while, you probably know what I'm gonna do next because we probably wouldn't use uh, let's flip these colors. Just by swiping between foreground and background, I switched to those colors, right? And I'm gonna add these shadows, right? You know what I'm gonna do next is probably use a blend mode, right? Because I know, since I'm working on that layer, add it accordingly. Let's make it a clipping mask, boom, right? It's a clipping mask. And now we can jump into the blend modes, right? So in here, I know which ones are gonna work. Of course, we have the darkens. That's only gonna work on the, the where I painted in black or the lighten. It's only gonna affect that. Well, the next category is affecting both. Overlay, soft light, hard light. I like overlay. Overlay is what I'm looking for. You have that light sort of uh, bouncing off that uh, turtle and I can always adjust that. See what I'm doing there? Joop, joop. And let's make this a little larger. Kind of see what that looks like adding, decreasing the light. That looks pretty good. Cool. Oh, Durand, you are too kind. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, but this is really fun. Oh, by the way, like I, I just kind of jumped to the chase. Like you get it right over here. If I click over here off to the side, I can import from my camera roll. I can import from files. I can import from CC libraries as well. Cause I think I have a nature category, which is probably where some of these came from. Nature, we get it. You know, here we have, you know, a fish that I can place in here. I already, I've already done this work because um, you know exactly what's gonna happen. It's, it's downloading a rendition. Actually, this is a very complex vector asset. Okay, so it's an Illustrator file that I'm placing in here. It does currently flatten it. We know what's on uh, the agenda is to import smart objects, which is going to be really cool. And if you're curious about what's next on the docket for um, Photoshop on the iPad, on the home screen, there's uh, request new features and sort of like gives you a glimpse of the new features that are coming. Because, um, yeah, this is definitely one that we would expect is having, of course, smart objects in here. All right, cool. Love blend modes as well. Blend modes mean means magic to me, right? Which is nice. What other tool just introduced to blend modes? Pop quiz. What other app just introduced blend modes recently? Anybody know? It's Adobe XD. There we are. 
Adobe XD now has blend modes as of uh, October. So anyways, I could jump in here. I'd probably do a darken, something like that, and multiply. But there's my little fish back there. That's cool. It works. I can move it around all I want, that sort of thing. So we'll place him down there. We'll maybe scale him down a little bit, right? Bringing in the assets that you want. I want to show you this. Turning on this little fishy. This one's even better, by the way. Let's change this. So, uh, <laughs> Kita's, Kita's got it. You know, XD, you are good. Um, but this is what I want to show you now. Is I want to show you this little dot right here, which I think this dot is pretty clever. Um, what this is, if I go to the help menu, view touch shortcuts, it's a touch shortcut. So it's going to do things differently depending on what tool you're using. Okay, so oftentimes it's like the shift key. Normally if I hold down shift, I'll be able to move things on a constrained axis, right? Or command J would duplicate a, a layer. Right. Well, this is taking care of those keyboard, those common keyboard shortcuts that you use. Right. So this is kind of again, just as example, come over here. It's it's this little dot, holding that holding that down. You can see it says move constrained, you know, vertically, diagonally. Right. Forty five degree angles. You get the idea. Dragging out. So this is the secondary action. Dragging this out says, hey, I'm gonna now duplicate this fish boom 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 we could see them be created and now it looks like a school of fish like a u.s public school because it's crowded <sighs> sorry for the political commentary but look i created 27 fish in mere seconds right it's so much easier than and not only that not only did i create them I created them and positioned them exactly where I wanted them in one one motion, right? And again, so hopefully you could see the power of that. Let's change that to like multiply. There's our school of fish back there. And yeah, we can kind of size them all down and do what we want to there. I think that's pretty powerful. Uh, I think I have other fish in here that I can play with, right? We have, oh, looks like I made a lot of those. Let's turn this one on. Larger fish in here. Maybe scale those down a little bit. Move those around as well. You get the idea. But this is my file. This is kind of what I'm working on. I think this looks pretty good. Uh, there's more I can add. Akita likes, uh, you know, boom. Let's do this. Akita likes blend modes. So that's what I'd consider in here. In fact, let's just change this to a pink. And then that background color. Let's go teal and pink. As a Photoshop Pro, you know these. You know, I can throw in a gradient there. And uh, again, this is just almost like a hack that you'll do, but I've obviously changed the color of this whole thing, um, you know, just by that one smooth motion of gradient and then playing with the overlay. Since Kita likes overlays, you got it. All right. Might as well be recreating Nemo. It's all about finding Nemo. Where is Nemo in this case? All right, so that's done. I can pinch that, hide my uh, layers, pinching that back down. Uh, it's being saved in the background, by the way, right? And you'll see that cloud icon right up here. This cloud icon will actually, it'll show that it's syncing sometimes, right? I could export it out. And this is your typical reaction. It's like, okay, I'll go ahead and export this out and I'll be done with it. Right, I'll turn this off really fast, but I could even save that, and now it's being synced. As we can see right over here, whoop, whoop, there it is. It's being synced to uh, my desktop, and it's already done, by the way. So uh, super easy. All those files are still available to me. Let's actually switch over, if I could, to my desktop. And again, to answer your question, like the iPad, I've been able to work in more places. I realize how much I work and how much I've been tied to my desk. And I think since using the iPad with Fresco and Photoshop, it's just opened up a whole new world for me. Um, I get to get out of the house sometimes, or at least work from my bed while watching Netflix more often, right? Because that's the whole goal. Like, what can I do by lying horizontally? <laughs> All right, here it is. We can see that file. Boom. There it is. Opening that up. You get the idea. Okay. Okay. Done, done. But I wanted to show you one more thing, because remember, Kita, I wanted to show you guys, make this larger. 
um, wanted to show you, and there's that gradient, by the way. So this is the same file. I can play all I want with these other fish. Oh, that's I absolutely love this. Oh, you got to be kidding me. My favorite new feature. Can I show you my sa favorite new feature right here? The fact that I don't know where this Renee fish is. I gave them all real names. <laughs> People who work at Adobe. <laughs> A Rene de Cherry. <laughs> like, I don't know where that fish is in here. So what you'd do in the past is you'd do, you'd actually hold down the command key and click on it. And then you'll look for that selection. You're like, where's that selection? Oh, there it is. That's how you'd find things, right? But all I need to do now is I can hold down the alt key, right? And then I click on that layer. It will zoom right to that layer where this specific fish is. And I'll bring this fish up to the top. There it is, right? You get the idea. Uh, and I can kind of zoom out. I'm like, okay, there you crazy fish. There you are. Let's move you over, have you right over there. But I could do that to a number of these. Bam. Oh, no, this Brian fish is, oh, it's back there. That's the problem. Brian's always hiding. I'm finding all these hidden little fish that are kind of back out of the way, right? Boom. Oh, there's another one, right? That's hidden. Rosa moving Rosa up there, right? You get the idea. There's pay, you get the idea. Okay, cool. I absolutely love that, by the way. The fact that I can zoom in, zoom out, add in, in just like a heartbeat and uh, continue to work. All right, fantastic. Let's get rid of that. Let's fix this a little bit. Fixing my design ever so slightly. All right, something like that. There we go, that looks a little better. But let's go beyond this. I think this looks really good. Um, and I could still kind of move these fish out. You know, they could vary in size, right? I get it, we could shrink some down and do all that stuff, right? I'll get into, obviously, the new ability to um, do Command-T is constrained now, whether it's pixel-based or... Um, vector based but basically you can change it to whatever you want to that's the that's the short of it it's very rare that i actually want to distort something um that's why i just kind of keep it as it is so it was a little too, too uniform shrinking that down okay that's good okay so we have our scene done right i'm feeling pretty good about this i'm going to save this it's being saved to creative cloud we'll check this out i'm going to open up a browser and i'm going to go to assets adobe.com and we'll check out cloud documents right i made those changes right it's being synced and saved all that fun stuff right it shows me it's a psdc uh yeah so if i go in the browser i can actually see that exact same file right here okay so i have access to these actually on the web i'm going to open this up Thanks, Drind. I'm glad you like it. So look, here it is. This is in the browser. So I can take this, I can copy it. I can post, if everything works well, to chat. If I could do this really fast. There you go. So that link that I just posted to chat um, is this same file. Okay, so I could send this. Remember, I actually could have gotten a link, by the way. This is just a shortened link. It's basically the same link at the top. Uh, so I'm allowing commenting and I'm allowing uh, uh, save to Creative Cloud, okay? So um, you, should, uh, you should be able to, if you click that link, I'll try it right now on my, yeah, there we go. It might say, check out cloud documents, blah, 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 but you're able to comment on this file now, okay? So you can jump in here and tell me, you know, what do you think? This is perfect. You could send this to a client. Uh, you don't need to wrap it in a PDF and send the PDF via email. You don't need to wrap it in a PDF and then make it a document cloud PDF, right? That is just another link. Literally, like, let me, oh, Matthias, ah, looks great. Um, more importantly, Matthias, I'm like, what do you, as I draw right here over this area, I'm going to say, 
what do you think of this cluster? Too tight? That's what I would say to my designer friend, right? I think they're still kind of bunched up and I'd want to scatter them out a little bit more, but I actually drew on that image, right? And added a comment. Uh, Michelle, when, when would you choose desktop or iPad to work on? Thank you so much for asking that. Uh, yes, Michelle, great question. When do you use Photoshop on iPad? Is it purely a location-based thing? No, not at all. Um, I think it actually depends on features. So this is version 1.0. Um, there's only so much that you could do in Photoshop on the iPad currently, by the way. And there's a lot more that's coming as I, you know, see what's coming in here. Hopefully that, that over. you should be able to see that slight delayed chat. But nonetheless, I would do basic compositing on the iPad, right? Like what I just did. But if I wanted to really warp those fish, it's gonna require puppet warp or a, some sort of transform. So I hit that limit where I'm like, okay, I need to really tighten this up and distort these fish. Therefore, I'm gonna finish this on my desktop. So that's my answer. But honestly, this shows why most of my work, um, <laughs> most of my work is really just creating masks on layers and cutting things out. So if that's, if that's most of your workflow, that's awesome. So compositing for sure. Co, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, man. I'm gonna say why thank you. Why thank you. I think that's good. A good thing. Super fluffy. <laughs> so, but, and this is, check this out. Here's another thing. Timeline. Yeah, are you impressed yet? Look at this. I'm afraid to select one of these. But if I wanted to bookmark this before I even started, I can bookmark it here. And I can say the start, starting... Point. That's the starting point before I started any of the compositing, right? But obviously, I'm at this point right here, right? And here's my marked versions. Yeah, wow. Valder said it correctly. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So keep an eye on that these versions expire after 30 days. Mark the ones you want to keep. It will keep those. The older ones will fall away. So keep that in mind. And just to point out, this is a PSD file, so I didn't have to worry. This is great because what usually happens in my case is I screw up something, and I'm like, oh, shoot, I misspelled that word. And then I'll have to jump in and I'll have to fix that one thing. In this case, like, move this fish over. It's like, oh, let's fix it. Let's see what happens. I move this fish over here. And let's go back in here. This is actually a question I have for myself, uh, is when that fish appears and, and how that happens. Um, but it should show my last edit should be, the, yeah. So that's, that's the big question for me right now, is how long does it take to kind of like refresh? Oh wait, did I even have it saved? Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, it should be good. All right, cool. Hey, who drew, who drew a face? Who drew this? Who did this? I got a bunch of jokers and I love it. So yeah, it all works exactly as expected. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch over to uh, desktop as people start to mock, mark this uh, file up and dive into the desktop features, which are really like, you know, again, pro quality. Cool, full screen, that one's done. All right, so again, that same file, if I open up Photoshop, if I take a look, Right in here it is, and I can start to work on this. And I could get a comment, this is what would happen. I'd get a comment in here saying, you know what? You know, make this part of the nature campaign. Uh, so that's what I'm gonna do, right? Make this part of that larger nature campaign. Uh, going to file, uh, open. I have cloud docs, and then I can also view documents on my computer. In this case, I'm just gonna open up this, this file. So this is the nature campaign that I need to integrate it into, okay? <laughs> Larry, did you draw that face? Larry, you're hilarious. I love it. 
We got some practical jokers in here. All right, so first off, Larry and Co and Kita, like, did you guys know you guys could do this? Like, this was, uh, I'm going to admit, it was news to me. I can select, let me try to select this layer folder that has all these large fish. fish. I'm going to do a copy. I'm going to go to the second file, and I'm going to select paste, and it will paste in those layers. So did you know that ha would happen? You could do a copy and paste just by selecting those layers. That's a couple versions old. I never knew that. I never knew that. I would always drag this folder over. That's how I would bring them over, right? But you could just do a copy and paste. Um, yeah, there's some fun fish. Let's kind of bring these in. Um, I'm going to put all my, my underwater scene in there, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, in cases, you might kind of convert this to a smart object, right? So it's just like one solid file, and then I can bring that over here, pasting that in, right? And putting it inside of that circle, right? Just by adding a clipping mask. So I added the clipping mask down here, right? He's in the circle. That looks pretty good. And I'm thinking at this point, <laughs> I'm thinking at this point, I want this turtle to kind of bust out of this circle. This is complex to do, right? Like it means I gotta go in and like open, you know, open this up and like, undo this smart object. Well, you can, you can actually undo a smart object by converting back to layers, which I find awesome. So you made something a smart object. In this case, I wanna convert it back to layers. Selecting convert to layers, it will make a folder, we'll see it in a second, of that smart object group that I made earlier, right? It did that, exactly what's expected. I'm gonna zoom in on this. Twirl this down. Maybe get rid of some of this other stuff. And to do the clipping that I want to do like that. Oh, here's another, this should work. Uh, if, if you want to select a, this is just a pro tip, by the way. If I want to select all the layers right here, I can, let me just try this. Oops. Nope. Undo that. Turn that off. Marquee tool. Ah. Ah, uh, okay, well, darn it, I don't remember how to do that, darn it. I should just be able to draw a marquee around those uh, fish. And, uh, yeah, not so much. But that's what I get for trying to do something on the fly. Or on the fish, in this case. But I'm just getting rid of some of these other guys. I can kind of move them in. I don't know if I necessarily like how they're breaking out of the border, but we're going to keep those ones in on that side and have this one busting out on this side. So that's all we're going to do. Uh, composite looks good. I could always do my cleanup. Like I said, sometimes you might need to do cleanup. I can see right up here that I have this situation that I need to clear up. So I'll just go ahead and take care of that. And I have another situation right over here. If I turn on, say, this square, right? I have this situation right over here. So let me show you this next thing that's going to help you out so much, right? All right, so are you guys still messing with that file? Okay, good. Just making sure. Now, going back here, same situation, right? I have uh, this bird, and I want to put this bird inside of that rectangle, like so, right? So it's in there, but I want to do the same thing. I want to have this bird, the wings, busting out of the box, right? So what do I do in that case? Duplicate that layer. And um, you can do this a couple different ways. In fact, I'll show you this tool, the object selection tool right? Uh, key thing to know is if you don't see this object selection tool, it means you might have customized your toolbar. So go into edit your toolbar and restore defaults. Anytime you don't see a tool, just restore defaults. 
because if you update, it might not be there if you, if you do that. So object selection tool, uh, you get it. So I select this bird, right? Like so, it selects that bird. I select this part of the wing, right? It selects it. I can hold on the, uh, the shift key and sh select this wing, right? So I have those two sides of that wing, grabbing what I want, right, in this case, and then converting it to a layer mask, right? And then this is the result that I'm going for. It's kind of busting out. I think it looks kind of cool, right? And it gives me the same vibe as this other one over here, right? And I can move that around if I want to, right? And that's all the object selection tool. Yeah, you copy the layer and remove the background. That's exactly what I did, Kita. Sorry, chat is a little slow. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Everything looks pretty good from my end. I'll do you one better. Are you ready for this, Co? And Kita, you ready for this? I absolutely love this. Let's do, let's do one better, because I have this triangle over here. And in this case, I have this these cute little foxes. Right, and I wanna do the same thing. I wanna cut them out, right? Just cut them out, right? So with that layer selected, it's a pixel layer. Opening up my properties panel, it's cool that I could select the subject, but then I had to make a layer mask and all that stuff. All I really need to do is remove the background. Oh yeah, so copy layer and remove background. Oh, Kita, are you ahead of me? Are you ahead of me? By the way, are you in the future? Selecting that layer, in the properties panel, we now have some quick actions. Depending on the layer that you have selected, this is a pixel-based layer, right in here. Yeah, select subject, that's what we did earlier. Guess what, remove background, let's click on that. Remove that background, and it removes the background in this case. It does a pretty fantastic job, by the way. It's looking pretty good, All right? From there, you get it, let's add a, have that background layer, and now we have that fun look, right? Cool. So this is pretty cool, Anita and Co. It's good to have you. Oh yeah, we got the banana. We can turn on the banana too. I'm pushing for more Easter eggs. I want more Easter eggs in these apps. Make apps fun again. And they are fun to work in, but like, you know, throw some fun surprises in there. So that's what we have. Uh, our arrangement looks pretty good. I'm going to go beyond this as well. Kind of dive into this. Just some quick stuff really fast. Uh, yeah, actually a couple things here. First thing is I, I need to change this text. I think we can all agree that this text is kind of lame, right? It's kind of lame, right? This nature text. If I open up the properties panel, for a text layer, for instance, I get all the properties that I would ever need for text, right? So at this point, yeah, I wanna make it all caps. In fact, I wanna make all three of those text layers all caps. Go into my properties panel, uh, taking a look, scrolling down. I don't need to open up, cause what, I'd be surprised. You're like, is it the paragraph? Is it like, is it the text? Is it the type or like what? What one of those panels do I pick this from? Well, guess what? Everything is in here. I want to make this all caps. Clicking right there, it makes everything all caps, right? For this word nature, even if I want to change the font or control the very variable width, width, and, and uh, slant, I can do that. And that's what I want to do is kind of position that, make it a little heavier and a little wider. Right, just make nature a little larger in that case. Right, but I don't need to open up the paragraph panel, right, or the character panel. Notice how they're still there in the background. These just, in my opinion, unless you're gonna go to um, some of these advanced settings, you know what, you can always get to it by going to paragraph, clicking on that, and get to those advanced settings, right? Uh, so yeah, so pretty pretty easy. You get it. That's enough about that. Let's get into some more fun stuff. Let's do fun stuff, okay? Let's add to this. 
And I want to add to this in a very fun way. Let's get rid of paragraph and character panels. We don't need them anymore, really. But uh, all of the properties panels that have been updated, excuse me, the presets panels, all the presets panels that have been updated. Like, check this out, swatches. Right, yeah, we've had swatches before. We can now organize them, categorize them any way we want, right? So we have total flexibility there, which is nice. We can get into gradients. Gradients were always hidden. It's like they weren't even a first class citizen. It's like, yeah, gradients, you gotta go. You gotta go to fill the object and then we'll give you the gradient settings, right? Well, that's not the case anymore. As I come in here, I could twirl all these down so I can make my own set. I will eventually put all of these in one, by the way. Like, I would just rather have these all like in one space, preferably, right? And call it Paul's. Right, so that's what I would do. Put everything in one, have all the fun with all the purples, all the pinks, because I'd like to see everything in one fell swoop. But obviously you can see how I can organize this. If I want to add one of these, I can just grab one, drop it on there, right? We have that gradient, we have this gradient, and I can just have some fun playing with this. These are not natural colors. Maybe if I get more into reds, it will be. oranges. Let's try greens. Here we go. This might be more along the lines of what I need for this particular project, right? Let's take a look. I like this smooth transition from blue to green or something like this, right? So that's what I'm going for. But all I'm doing is clicking and selecting each one of those. And what it's doing is it's actually adding a gradient fill layer. That's what's happening. Okay. I could do that. Let's go beyond that, by the way, because I dig the gradients. Sure. We can go into something a little bit more robust. Let's actually use some trees, for instance. That looks pretty good. Let's go into stone. No. Maybe wood. You get the idea. Okay. So again, having all these textures and patterns uh, works out pretty well. And honestly, like I'm able to get these different looks really quickly, right? There we go. Trying to find something that's maybe a little easier to read. So it needs to be a little bit darker. Let's go with wood. So now I have uh, this wood, I have these leaves, and I have this gradient that I can kind of pick from, right? At the end of the day, I think I like this gradient because I think uh, cleanliness, as you mature as a designer, you're probably using, you're doing, it's like less is more, all right? Colby's in the house. What's up, Colby? How you doing, man? Did you have a nice time when you were in San Francisco live streaming? Would love to hear your two cents. Here's another thing, another thing that I want to do. Patterns, styles, by the way. Yeah, we can add those styles. Uh, but shapes, again, being a first class citizen. And these I'm gonna probably dump all in one folder, right? Cause I don't, I just don't need this big mess of, but here I can grab a tree and uh, let's just put it right up here at the top. Shoop, bring in that tree and uh, start to position this where I wanna position it. Okay, in this case, by the way, couple things. I have this like flower in here somewhere. Here's a flower. So check out all of these various shapes, by the way, all of these shapes, got to have those, got to love them. Uh, I talked about this a second ago as well. Command T uh, is set to constrained, by the way, right? And I can always toggle that on and off. So Command T right up here, I can turn that off so I can set the default. But notice that the default is consistent from pixel-based to vector-based, it's gonna be consistent again, so I don't have to uh, change that or toggle that or anything like that, which is nice. Uh, if I wanna change it, like even midway through, by the way, I can hold down the Shift key and that changes it to the opposite of what you have it set up for. All right, that's looking pretty good. Oh, thank you, Durand. Appreciate it. I do think, I think a couple things. This is what I think. I think nature, since we're getting into the design aspect, really, oh gosh, I have so much to show. Uh, I'm going to take down the weight because I think the weight should be the same thickness as that tree, right? 
So making this kind of the same thickness, that looks pretty good. Uh, but I also want to distort this tree as well. Okay, so for the cedar tree, if I wanted to distort this, we would go into uh, transform and then warp it. And when you warped it, by the way, you only got a three by three grid. And we said, good luck with that. Well, in this case, I really just kind of want to bend that tree kind of to the left a little bit and make it kind of flourish at the top more. Well, I can define those lines because as you can see, I can pick the from the, that's the traditional three by three, guess what? We can change all these different amounts and we can add a custom grid, which I think is nice. So coming in here, I could split that right there. I could split it horizontally, like right here, and uh, start to manipulate this accordingly. So I think the less points, the better, as I start to pull that out, right, and bring this part in to make this look, just kind of like give it, like make it look a little bit more upright and not so slanted. So this goes just with the text a little bit more. Uh, but again, this is under edit, transform, uh, warping capabilities, which is nice. Yeah, Keita Jones, I'm trying to make best use of your time. That's why I'm going fast. And no, yes, I've done this. I've done this. I've done this before. So yes, I've, this is prepared. And the thing is, is like, I like to show you like how to use things within the context of a design. Here I'm covering like all the top features and then there's more um, within, within one design. Because again, we started out on Photoshop on, for the iPad we got into all these new features that I've been working on now. Uh, but there is more, by the way. Um, this is going pretty well. Again, I could zoom in on that. Boom, there we are, back at the tree. Zoom, back out. Uh, let's take a look at what else we have for... Um, I can open this. This is kind of where this is going to open up. Actually, we'll just go ahead and use this image for the sake of time, okay? So, sorry, I'm deviating from my theme, which I hate doing. <laughs> uh, but let's just say I wanted, like, less of these. And maybe they changed the flavor from almond to walnut or something like that, right? I could select that loosely. And by the way, what I can do is I can use my uh, select subject tool, jump in there, and select see what happens select those nuts right and add to it as well just using direct selection tool because I actually want to get these shadows as well so basically to make them disappear so what do we do we we, we do a content aware fill and remove it so edit content aware fill right here selecting that and it says use the sample brush tool because I have it set to custom uh, to paint over the parts uh, and, and sample the areas that you want to use, right? So I'm sampling on the left, and then it's showing me the results on the right. There we go. Let's do that. Maybe that looks a little better. Preview. I can grab more of this as well, less of this. And keep in mind, this is set to custom, which is what I like. It just gives me, like, full control. So... Uh, so you do have to do it manually, but I'd rather, I just end up having to control this a lot. Um, I could also select auto where it will actually determine, and you can see it'll go through and select all those points, right? Right in here, I can come in and say, no, don't grab that. Don't grab this. You're getting too much of that. And that is the auto setting, right? And here I'm just removing from those areas. Durand, what are you talking about? Durand, do I know you? Do we, do we, do you live in my neighborhood? <laughs> All right. Anyways, you see the magic and uh, super easy to work with. Magic. It's all magic. Full control when it comes to removing content like I did here, right? It's gone, full control, yes, it's magical, right? It's like, Photoshop's gonna get to the point where it recognizes this as ice cream. And it, it could say, hey, you want to, someday it could say, you want a different flavor ice cream? Hey, we could go ahead and search 
you know, Adobe stock and serve up different ice cream in this exact same spot. It's only going to get more and more uh, crazy as we go along and easier for us, by the way, uh, as designers. Uh, let me check my list of fabulous features. I have them actually right here. Uh, of course, have my list right over here as well. So let's make sure I got everything. Select subject, compositing, shortcuts as well. Let's take a look at some of those power user features. Uh, kind of show, showed you a lot. I showed you a lot of cloud docs too. The stuff in the browser is pretty powerful. Uh, uh, object selection tool, we did that. Taking a look, wait for it. Ooh, okay, cool. We have, uh, if we wanted to get into brushes, by the way, uh, we can rotate brush tips now um, just by holding on the left and right arrow. So background, we'll create some nice splashes in that case. Grab the brush. Uh, let's take one of these. Chunky charcoal. Here's my chunky charcoal. And uh, I like how this is looking. It's horizontally. That's the brush stroke. I use my arrow keys so I can do a uh, left arrow and then I can get it at more of a dynamic angle, as you can see, right? So then I can use it accordingly. And I can paint one at a time or multiple. I can start doing different splotches. This gets to be really important, especially um, when you turn a like a leaf or something into a brush. I'll often do that. It's like, give me control over the angle of my uh, stamped graphic. That's when I would use it. Let me control the stamped graphic, right, in this case. And let me pick a different color. Whew. Here we are. Boom. Oh, I like that. Oh, it's going to be over here. Let's make it a little larger. Let's rotate it to the right. Add a splotch right there. Rotate it over there. You get the idea. Just adding some texture to the background. And uh, yeah, I can erase with the same brush too, by the way. As I stamp a little bit, right, I take a look, stamp solid edges. So if I hold down the tilde key, tilde key is going to allow me to erase with that same brush. And I can kind of get rid of that, uh, that uh, those splotchy textures, or whatever, right? So that's kind of the idea. That's it with brushes. Hugely helpful for... Uh, designers as I just added some fun texture back there. I don't know. Maybe it's working. It actually is not because I like how clean it was before. But taking a taking a page out of Akita's book and I'm switching to uh, layer blend modes, maybe changing it to overlay. And now we have just some nice texture back there, as you can see. Cool. Uh, let me check chat. Yeah, so there's plenty of features on desktop that, well, actually, uh, Ray... Are there any like porting them to the iPad? I don't think there's any feature that won't out and out like won't write out work won't work on the iPad like right away. So to answer your question, no, there's there aren't features that won't work. There are just, just a lot of features that haven't been implemented yet. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, cool. I'm wrapping up here down to my last minute answering these questions. A cut and paste, Paul Alvarez. Biggest way to figure that out is actually launch it and take a look. Because to be honest with you, I don't know. <laughs> I will show you these additional, I'm sure there is. Yeah, there is. So let's switch this over. This is for Paul as we wind down on the iPad. Here we are, we're talking about uh, additional layer actions as I click right over here. Uh, there's a multi-select mode, but here you can have your copy layer, your paste layer. In fact, if I just select part of the background, let's get this back, zoom out, twirl this content down. Uh, yeah. Some features, so you see this long menu, like it kind of uh, 
yeah, it's passed by way too fast. So Paul, yes, you can. You could copy and paste. If it's grayed out, it means you just don't have the correct layer selected or you don't have anything selected so it doesn't know what to transform. You know how that works. Uh, but yeah, you have it right here. And then you do have a multi-select mode, copy merge, all this fun stuff in here as well. Uh, one thing I didn't do is like if I wanted to blur out the background, we can go into Gaussian blur. And let me just kind of move here. We want to blur out the background a little bit. It might actually, you know, I think it's only doing it on that selection, is it? That's the layer I want it to happen on. Let's just select everything. And here's filters and adjustments. Uh, and this is this is the, the case where like there aren't a lot of filters in here, right? We need to do a lot of work in this area, but all that stuff is coming, right? Again, we're taking 30 years of technology and trying to cram it in that it just won't happen with a version 1.0. Uh, but obviously I kind of blur that out and do what I need to. Uh, I don't think that really adds anything to it. So I'm just gonna leave that alone and uh, stretch that out. I think the big thing that I would like to see here is the ability to distort or puppet warp. Would love to see puppet warp here as well. Um, but you get the idea. So thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me, um, winding down to the last minute. So I appreciate you guys and all that you do. Follow me on Instagram and all the social medias to find out more and to see what I've been working on. Uh, no frequency separation filter. Again, it's kind of more for compositing right now. Um, so yeah, that stuff's coming. I know a lot of people use that. You're the second person to ask that in the past day for me, by the way. So yeah. All right, everyone. Well, have a wonderful day and uh, yeah, get in touch with me, P T R A and I on Instagram and Paul Tranny on Twitter. And uh, we'll talk soon. Merci, everybody. Have a wonderful day. We'll see ya.